Hello guys, it's Adelina. Today I'm going to talk about comparison. I have personally experienced the negative effects of comparison and that's why I wanted to dive deep into the subject today. I think it fits very well within the trajectory of this channel, which is productivity, motivation and study methods. So let's jump right in together. So it's a new year and many of us are reflecting on the bygone year and some of us feel resentful, low and frankly unhappy, while there are some people who feel satisfied and they feel happy with what they achieved last year. But there are many of us who are stuck in the rut of comparing with others and social media doesn't make that easier. And that is why I think this subject is so important and why I want to go deeper into it today. I think competing and comparison can be related to imposter syndrome and perfectionism. Perfectionists have a habit of thinking that whatever they do is never quite enough and imposter syndrome can make you doubt your own competency. It makes sense that both perfectionism and imposter syndrome would make comparison with others, you know, feel even worse. Because if you're never happy with what you do and you always doubt your own competency, you will kind of always worry that others are ahead of you. If you want an expert definition of these of this terminology, I would really recommend Anna Psychology's channel. Everything she says is often science-based and she discusses all this as a professional so i would really recommend to visit that channel for a deeper psychological drive but i'm going to speak more from personal experience sometimes comparison maybe doesn't need to be related to perfectionism or imposter syndrome or and can instead just be related to you having a jealous streak or an inferiority complex that causes some difficult feelings within you you to deal with. Let's say you are a psychology student as an example. Seminars are very anxiety driven for you. You prepare and prepare and prepare and then the day comes and you do your presentation and afterwards you get compliments from your professor and even the students. But there are thoughts that are tormenting you. Oh, there was that one instance when I got a question and I froze. How could I do that? And one time I used that one terminology wrong and everyone looked at me. And why doesn't this never happen to Angela and Felix? Angela and Felix never make mistakes. You're basically idolizing Angela and Felix and now seminars for you become all about outshining Angela and Felix. You completely lose focus of your own journey. With that example in the background, I want to give you a mind exercise. I want you to right now imagine your favorite character. It may be from a movie, from a series, from an anime. And I want you to imagine what you like or admire about this character. For me, it's Wednesday Adams. She is high achieving and determined. She stands up for what she believes in. She seems to live in accordance with her values. She's even a hardcore feminist. Basically, she has all the qualities I desire for myself. But watching the series, I realized that I think she is the most interesting interaction with others in power dynamics with others because that is when she learns so much about herself and we get to learn more about her. We get to really experience other sides of her and really test her qualities put her qualities to the test. Even she learns more about herself and she cares deeply about people and she appreciates people for who they are and she brings out some strengths in people that they themselves didn't know they had. I want you to consider that your favorite character it would be far less interesting if you didn't see them inter in power dynamics with other characters. If you saw them just sit in a room alone, they would be much less interesting. And the purpose of me giving that example of the psychology student in the seminars and then giving you this mind ex exercise is to give you a thought experiment of how you can see yourself. You are far more interesting in relation to others, in dynamics with others. The possibility of others being better than you or getting ahead of you should not paralyze you with fear. See it as a challenge. I want you to look people around you in the eye and be curious about them. Wednesday Adams, she's unique and so are you and I think it's in your best interest 
to embrace that uniqueness, to go deeper into the journey of uniqueness, I would recommend the book Mastery by Robert Greene. That book was personally very helpful for me. Don't let the negative thoughts win. We all have negative thoughts. They are completely natural. What matters is how we deal with them and how we respond to them. If for example, I was the only study streamer out there, I would be far less interesting because there wouldn't be anyone else who maybe thinks differently from me and nothing to compare me with. And the more study tubers there are, the more people are likely to find their match. Some medical students, for example, may only want to study with other medical students. So me having a place among many others doesn't lower my value. The same goes with, for example, psychology. I love to read a lot of psychology and kind of implement it into my own life. And I love to read the perspectives of different psychologists because that is how, if you think about it, that is how any subject evolves. There are competing theories and competing experiments and they challenge each other. Having another perspective can make us see things in a new way that we wouldn't have otherwise. If we go back to specifically imposter syndrome, I really found a section in the book Stop Fear From Stopping You by Dr. Odesky that I want to read to you these two sentences. And she says that a novice is someone who needs to gather relevant skills and could benefit from mentorship. A novice is someone capable of growing into their role when talking about imposter syndrome. I think this is very helpful for those of us who experience imposter syndrome because it makes you realize that you do not need to know everything to be one of the best. And when you get into a new degree or a new job, you shouldn't be expected to know everything. You're someone who has the right background and is capable of growing into this role that you have gotten. And you could probably benefit from some mentorship. I think that's a really helpful and balanced way of looking at it. That you might not have all the answers now, but you will grow into this role. Looking at it that way, just personally and internally, could increase your confidence tremendously and make you value with what you can contribute with right now. I think it's powerful to believe in oneself and try to not view others as threats that could possibly lower your own value. Others are not you and you are not them. Instead, I think you can use comparison in a positive way. Use it to be inspired by others. If they did it, you can most likely do it too. And we are approaching the end of what I wanted to say today. And I wanted to bring up one specific exercise that I do when I feel that jealous or uncomfortable inferiority complex feeling, those difficult feelings feelings bubbling up within me, I sit down and I answer these questions in a journal. I want you to take out your own notebook and I want you to write down these questions that you can look back on every time you experience any negative effects of comparing yourself to others. Okay, what is it that they are doing that I want to do? How can I take steps to do more of that? What are my own prerequisites and can I compensate? Can I and how can I compensate for the advantages that they have with hard work? Because many times we may think, oh, they have so many advantages. They may have a very supportive family that you don't feel like you have or a trust fund or wherever. Then it can be really good to just think in what way, that last question specifically, in what way can I compensate for the advantages that they have? What do I have that they maybe don't have? And is there anything I can compensate for in hard work. Every time I do answer these questions, I tend to feel m more motivated without fail. And every time my negative feelings towards that person disappears and I feel better and calmer. So I really recommend doing this exercise. Lastly, don't forget that others are reflections of you and you are reflections of them. You live in relations to others, but 
you are not them and they are not you. You may, may learn many new things and people and everyone have weaknesses, but those weaknesses doesn't mean you shouldn't have a strong sense of self necessarily, right? You have a place, there is one place in the world that is just yours after all. Many times comparison with others can make us feel like, where do I fit in? Where is my place? How could I possibly stand out? But there is actually one place in this world that is only yours and that is your mind and it doesn't make sense to not do everything you possibly can to make your mind work for you and to make it a safe place for you so all that being said about comparison and getting your mind where you want it to be i personally realized and experienced that you should never let these negative thoughts and these fears when you compare yourself with others to hinder you or stop you from going after what you really want. I personally experienced that sometimes all you need is for that one person to believe in you. And I want you to let me be that person because I do believe in you. I do believe in every single one of you and I do believe you can make a great story for yourself, whatever that turns out to be for you, even if it's something you didn't expect or didn't think you want, but it still turned out to be a great story. Thank you so much guys for tuning in and I will see you in the next stream or the next video. Goodbye.